Good day, everyone. And once again, we are back together. All right. So we are still looking at that exam from the IEB, right? Uh, November 2022. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. Right. So we're going to be starting with question four. Right. Let's get right into it. They say two blocks A and B uh, are attached to the ends of an inextensible uh, uh, rope. Okay, they say that passes over a pulley. The system is released from rest. And they say to us the friction of the pulley and the mass of the rope are negligible. All right. Now, uh, the first thing that we're going to look at, they say to us we must define what weight is. Right. So remember that weight is the force exerted on the mass of a body by a gravitational field. Okay. Right, so um, I won't write that down. Uh, I want us to quickly move on to the next question. Now, they say to us, draw a labeled free body diagram, okay, of the forces acting on block B. Now, so when we look at block B, I want you to note in this case, right, so block B would actually be pulled up, okay, because block A is heavier, so the weight on block A would be heavier than the weight on block B, so as a result, the system will tend to move, in this case, anti-clockwise, okay? So as a result, it means that block A will go down and block B will be pulled up, okay? So what are the forces that are acting on block B? It will be the force of gravity or the weight of block B, okay? So there it is there. So that's the weight on block B. Okay, so I just say weight on B, right, as well as the tension on the string. Okay, so it will also be the tension on the string. Now, um, I don't think this drawing just indicates very clearly. Of course, I'm expecting that the tension on that string should be much longer Okay, so we must show the magnitude by the length uh, of the force. So the tension should be greater than the weight. Okay, so as a result, that force or in the diagram, that force must be seen to be longer. Okay, right. So there it is. Okay, so the next question, they say state Newton's second law. All right. So remember, there are two ways in which you can state it. Right. We can use... In this case, uh, the fact that the resultant force is equal to the rate of change of a body's momentum, right? Or you can use the fact that a uh, resultant force, if a resultant force acts on a body, uh, it will cause the body to accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. And that acceleration is directly proportional to the resultant force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Of course, if I were you, I would have opted for uh, the first one. Much easier to state. All right. Now they say to us, um, use Newton's second law to write down an expression for F net in terms of all the forces acting on block B. Right. Do not substitute any values, right? So if I look at the forces that are acting on block B, now you remember what I said. Uh, we said there are two forces there. We've got, uh, right, let's say F net, uh, which is equal to, right, the tension on the string minus, in this case, the weight on block B. Right, so minus the weight, or you can say force of gravity. Right, so that's the expression for F net. Okay, right, they did say we shouldn't substitute. Of course, in that case, I'm going to assume for block B that upwards motion is positive. Remember, we always take the direction of motion as being positive. Okay, so it means which means that T would be my positive force. And weight would be the downward force in that case. Right. Now, let's go on to the next one. Okay. In fact, let me just write there the weight on B. Right. 
uh, for the <coughs> sorry for the next question they say to us calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system right and the tension in the rope okay now i want you to please note so we're looking for the acceleration as well as uh the you know the tension on the string so looking at a uh, body a so let's go right back there right in body a i know that I'll, i will have the weight of body a right so the weight on a but i also have the tension that's opposing in that case now remember because we've got a friction frictionless pulley the tension on the one side of the pulley will be equal to the tension on the other side of the pulley right so i'm going to start there okay i'm going to say right let's start with body a we know that f net is equal to ma so for body a it will be the weight remember for body a downwards would be positive right because it is going down so it's going to be the weight on a minus the tension this is equal to uh, the mass of it which is going to be remember we said a is the bigger one which is eight kilograms and b is six right so that's going to be eight multiplied by the acceleration which is unknown now let's get an expression for the weight in this case this is going to be eight times 9.8 minus t which is equal to 8a right um so let's get that calculation so that's 8 times 9.8 that gives us 78.4 so this is going to be 78.4 minus t which is equal to 8a now let's call that equation one now really it's up to you how you want to solve this Right, so now let's look at B on the other hand. For B, we've already got in the expression. We said this is going to be T minus um, uh, the weight of body B. Okay, and this is equal to MA. Right, so the tension there minus the weight, remember on body B, that is 6 times 9.8. That's the mass of the body and this is going to be 6a right uh, let's find the weight uh, that's going to be 6 times 9.8 so we've got t minus 58.8 which is equal to 6a and this will be equation 2 right so what you want to do is perhaps you know maybe isolate the weight uh, the tension on the one and then substitute it in the, into the other equation. But what I normally like doing is I just simply take equation 1 and equation 2 and add them up, right? So meaning everything on the left-hand side of each equation. So I've got 78.4 minus T plus T minus 58.8, right? And this is going to give me, right, I'm going to add everything that's on the right-hand side. So this will give me 14a, right? So that's 8 plus 6a, right? So in this case, you can see those two cancel out. And what am I left with? So I've got 78.4 minus 58.8. Okay, that gives us 19.6. So that's going to be 19.6, which is equal to 14a. And to get the acceleration, all we simply do is divide by 14. What I do on the left, I do on the right. And sorry, uh, that cancels with that. 19.6 divided by uh, 14. That gives me an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared, right? Now that I've got in the acceleration, okay, um, how do I then work out the tension? Sorry, I don't have uh, sufficient space here, right? So how will I get the value of the tension since they wanted this? 
So I'm going to substitute my value for acceleration into any of the two equations. Let me substitute it into equation two. Okay, so that's going to be now for tension minus 58.8 is equal to 6 times 1.4. Okay, right now let's work out that tension. Of course, I'm going to take that to the other side. Okay, so I've got uh, 6 times 1.4. All right, and I'm going to add into it 58.8. All right, and I've I get my tension to be 67.2 newtons. All right. So that is how I would go about doing that question. All right. And uh, nothing wrong if you decided to take the entire system as one thing. Right. Uh, so what you would have done in that case is that uh, if you take this as an entire uh, body. Right. So it means the two weights, you would take the difference of the two weights and you would add the masses together and find the acceleration from that okay uh, i prefer this method uh, the one that i've done here okay so uh, because in this case it makes it easier for us to obtain the tension as well all right now let's go to the next question right now they say to us block a is 1.2 meters um, above block b when the system is released from rest okay so there it is we can see it's 1.2 meters above and now they say to us calculate the time uh, after release before the blocks bump into each other okay right now please i want you to note what do we know in this case we know we've got the acceleration right you remember we uh, we found that uh, the acceleration is going to be 1.2. Okay, right. Uh, let's just verify. Actually, it was 1.4. Sorry about that. So that becomes 1.4 meters per second squared. Right. We know that the system started from rest. So our, our V initial is zero. Okay. And in this case, we know that the displacement, or rather the distance between them, uh, was 1.2. Uh, yeah, it's the one that was 1.2. Okay, um, so that's 1.2 meters. And in this case, we are looking for the time that it will take uh, for us, in this case, um, for them to, uh, to get near each other. Right, so what don't we have? We don't have final velocity, right? So I'm going to say, right, so this is delta y, that's vi delta t plus 1 over 2a delta t squared, right? So that's 1.2 meters. Okay, v initial was 0, right? So that makes this entire term 0 plus half. Our acceleration is 1.4, okay, times the time, okay, which is what we're looking for, delta t squared. All right, so half of 1.4, in this case, that will give us 0 0.7 delta t squared, okay, which is 1.2, okay, so we're going to first divide by 0 0.7 on either side, and we're going to take the square root, okay? Uh, so to get delta t, we're going to take the square root of 1.2 over 0 0.7, okay? Right, so let's do that quickly. Uh, that gives us the square root of 1.2 divided by 0 0.7, Okay, and I get a value of time of 1.31 seconds. All right, so that is how I would obtain that time over there. Right, now in this case, I want you to please note, guys, uh, that is how we would answer that question. All right, uh, please note 
sometimes of course we will uh, you know mix uh, newton's laws together with equations of motion so please do look out uh, for that but otherwise i think i want to leave that question there right uh, i'll see you guys of course when we do the next question which is on work energy and power i'll see you guys next time shop shop